Hi guys, welcome to 16-Bit Bench. Matt here. Uh, today we're going to be working on modifying a uh, European region Mega Drive to run in 5060 hertz mode and also English and Japanese. Um, so if we open up this console, oh, I've already run in a three position switch um, that will allow us to switch between the different modes. I've run a bit of ribbon cable in, round, round the cartridge connector and down to the various pins. So the idea of this switch is that it will allow you to select either 50 or 60 hertz and either um, Japanese or English language. Um, so if we get a piece of paper, so you can draw a table of uh, Japanese and English and then uh, 50 and 60 hertz. So um, valid modes would be Japanese at 60, and that's what you get in, um, in Japan. English at 60, that's what you get in the US. English at 50, that's what you get in Europe and the UK. But Japanese at 50, that is an illegal mode. Okay, so you, you would never have Japanese 50 hertz. Um, you could, in theory, run, run the console and in that mode. And there is an earlier mod, which is a dual switch mod, so you're switching the language and the frequency independently. And in that mod, it is possible to have 50 hertz Japanese. But what you might see on some games is they will say this game is not coded to run at this frame rate. Um, and what you do see actually is, is if, you're in, if you switch to 60 hertz English and you play a PAL coded game, so that's usually games by uh, UK developers like Cygnosis or um, Team17, uh, it won't run. It will say error, not coded to run in this language. So to achieve this switching table, we have a, th a single pole three throw switch, and that's a switch that looks like this. Uh, it has three output positions, and then a throw. So we've got one, two, three. Sorry for my weird letters, it's hard, weird numbers. It's hard to write upside down. I think my three is actually backwards. Is that better? That's better. Um, Okay, so what happens is on, on position one of the switch, so my switch here and I've run a wire, I've run a wire down. So that's this wire here, that's coming down to this trace. And if you look in the description for this video, there's a whole tutorial on how to do this. So I'm not gonna go through it exactly, but um, yeah, you come down to this pin off of the big processor here in the middle. And that is, uh, that is your Japanese English selector pin. So when that pin is high, it is English, and when it is low, it is uh, Japanese. So, <clears throat> that hell is the wrong way around. Hello. Um, so what we do here on this output of the switch is I have, I have a resistor to uh, five volts. And that's acting as a pull-up resistor. So when this, this when the switch is not connected to the um, to the output here, it uh, it floats high and it forces English. So if we look at if we look at the uh, the circuit board, what you'd see here is there should be a trace that comes off of the chip down to where I've connected the wire to a high uh, voltage source, so a five volt voltage source. What we've done is we've cut the trace. And we've replaced that trace with a pull-up resistor, this resistor here. So what's happening now is when the switch is uh, is, a, is not forcing this pin here low, then it will automatically be high. So in, in the situations there, that means that almost all the time English is coming out unless you switch the, high, the switch to uh, be connected to uh, common, which is here then it forces low and it makes it Japanese. Pin number two is connected to nothing. It's uh, actually ground, so that's uh, it's common. And pin number, actually no, it's connected to nothing. I didn't wire it to anything. And pin number three, that is connected to your uh, 50, 60 hertz selector. So if we look here, what I've done is there's a trace coming off the chip here. In fact, um, I'll tell you what. 
let's uh, let's take a video. So we'll just take a video real quick, so we can see what I'm talking about. So down here is where I've cut the Japanese language selector trace uh, and replaced it with a resistor. That's a pull-up resistor. And then over here, oh, losing it. You can see I've cut a trace here from that pin. So the pin that that trace comes from is something like pin 47. Uh, that will be low um, to select 50 hertz and high for 60 hertz. So what we've done is we've cut it here. So what it was connected to is this area and this area is, is, is ground. So it was grounded and that forced it to, um, to 50 hertz. So this trace runs all the way up here and it comes out on a jumper here called jumper number three. And that's where I've connected the wire. It's just below this resistor. And this resistor is now is then acting as a pull up resistor to this jump point just below it where it says jumper four. And that's a five volt source. So again, it's the exact same idea as we had with uh, Japanese. So when the switch is disconnected, this is high and high is 60 hertz. And when the switch is connected, it's low and low is 50 hertz. So in position one, the switch will be low here and high here. So low here is 50 hertz and high here is English. So position one is English. Position two is everything's disconnected so that forces position that forces position one and position three high so high is 60 hertz and high is english so in position two we are basically in the us region and then in position three um, that forces uh pin three so the frequency selector to go low that's low that's 50 hertz but the language will be high, 50 hertz, English is high, and that's this selection here. So with one switch, we select three different modes, and it replaces the two switch function that they used to have. So what you basically have done in the two switch function is wire these, these two functions completely separately. So I'd have one switch coming off here for the um, frequency, and one switch coming off here for the language, and I would switch those independently with one switch with two switches, sorry, so by replacing it with one switch, it's a neater solution. And I think it works a lot nicer. So that covers how the region mod's gonna work with the, with the with three position switch here. And what we're gonna do also is replace the, uh, the red LED here with a tricolor LED. So that is an LED that's either red, blue, or purple, combination of red and blue. So we need to build a circuit to make that work. So the, the LED is common uh, cathode, no, sorry, it's common anode. So the, circ the LED looks like this. It has two inputs and then it has one output and that output goes to ground. And we got some, and that's a symbol for an LED mostly. Uh, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect two uh, resistors here And they're going to come up to plus five volts. So in this situation, uh, both red and blue will be either uh, both off, which is red, blue's on, red's off, or both on. And when they're both on there, purple when they're both off that means the power is off so we don't we don't actually have this mode on the switch so the switch will allow us to set between these three modes and the way we're going to do that is we're going to we're going to wire in our switch here and here so the as before with the switch diagram it's three positions with one common and that common is to ground and then i've got a red here and blue here and not and basically yeah purple in the middle so when we are, when we are in the red, when we're switched to the red position, what's happening is I am flowing, 
I'm grounding here. And that means that no uh, volts are flowing through the uh, blue half of the diode, so the color coming out is red. When I am in the blue position, the same is happening, but in on the opposite, so there is no um, voltage. This is zero here, this is shorted to ground. So that means that uh, the red is, is not lit and only blue light comes out of the LED. In the middle position, both of these are ground. No, sorry, in the middle position, nothing is grounded. Okay, so voltage flows freely, freely, freely through these two resistors. And that means both uh, red and blue light come out of the LED and that gives us purple light. So what I did is I built, it, I built this circuit just to test it to make sure I had it right. So if we turn this on, Okay, so this would be the LEDs off and it's just here if you can just see it. The LEDs off and that would be the position where um, the console is turned off. So if I then flick the switch and basically what I've done is I've, I've now shorting across the red. So if we can see here, can we see that on the camera? I'm not sure we can pick that up. Tell you what, let's uh, let's zoom in, get a better look at this, and then uh, it'll make more sense. Right, so we've zoomed in a, in a bit, and I think you can see, yeah, if I do that, you can see the LED. So uh, we're currently in blue, and if I do that, that would be like how the console is completely turned off. If I turn it on, that's position one, so we now got a red LED. Uh, that's position three, so I've got a blue LED. And then I don't think it will show on the camera, but that's position, that's the middle position, so position two, and that is a purple LED. So that's basically what we're going to, how we're going to be wiring our switch. On the, on the Mega Drive, let's have a look here. They have their LED, and let's just, uh, let's just use. Uh, my camera. So that's their LED wired up here. It's uh, got five volts coming in this side, and then it is going through a resistor here to ground. So that's so it's always on when the power is flowing. So on this side of the LED, there will always be five volts, and over here, the other side of the resistor, there's some ground. So what we're going to do is actually going to remove this resistor from the motherboard and the LED, obviously. I'm going to short that trace so this whole trace is ground. I'm going to use that as my common uh, output. I'm going to take the 5 volts. I'm going to run that through my two resistors. And then on the other side of the resistors, I'm going to connect up these wires for the switch. So one of the wires will be to ground and then one to be uh, one side of the LED and one to be the other side of the LED. So one will be red and one will be blue. Uh, that's the next thing we need to do. Okay, uh, so that's most of the wiring done. Let's just take another another close up of what we've got. So you can see, I've got two resistors. Uh, the orange wire is feeding five volts to the top of the resistors, and then they're flying back into the LED, emitting the colour and through the other side. So what I want to do now is grab a power supply and plug this guy in and see if he works. <music> Here we go back on the close up. So, uh, if I turn the console on in position one, so this is um, this is power 50 hertz, and the LED lights up red. Uh, position the middle position, I think is Japanese, is it? So everything's flowing high. No, everything's yeah. The middle position is power 60 hertz. 
and in the middle position the LED is purple I'm hoping that shows on the camera but it might not so that's blue that's purple and no that's red that's red that's purple and that's blue so yeah the, the LED is working it's changing and the switch changes and that will also be changing the mode on the console so now all we need to do is tidy up a bit so i've got to put a bit of heat shrink tubing over those uh, resistors push everything flat to the board um, i've already hot glued the bits that i'm worried about so i think the rest of it's probably okay and yeah we'll put the cover on and then see how how it looks and that's that's it that's the mega drive 2 uh, with the 50 60 hertz mod and the tricolor LED indicator so you can see it's in purple mode at the moment if I flip the switch at the back uh, blue is Japanese 60 hertz purple is USA 60 hertz or you know, English 60 hertz and then red is uh, normal operations so that's, that's PAL 50 hertz uh, if we take a look at the game screen you can see the difference between the 50 and 60 hertz so 50 hertz has the blue bars top and bottom it runs about 20 percent slower so you can hear the music and then when i hit the um, 60 hertz switch see full screen faster now uh, if we go into super hang on we'll be able to see the japanese uh, text um, there are a couple of games, I think maybe Streets of Rage, uh, the first one, you can actually switch um, You can switch live during the game so you can see the school and you change it uh, between Japanese and English, but this game you can't. So you can see here, there's Japanese text there, top and bottom. So um, and we're in the blue mode. Uh, so if I switch it to purple, it's still Japanese now. Reset the console. Start Super Hang On, New Game, Original Mode, and they can see it's now English. So that is the 50 hertz thing. I've got it stretched out there. That's four by three. Um, so yeah, that is uh, that is the mod. And I'm really pleased with that. It makes a much better playing experience for all those in the power region that have suffered with compressed screens for this long uh, on a CRT it looks really good that's RGB out as well on this this is a French model Mega Drive so it's RGB native um, yeah great great little uh, mod so um, first of all I want to apologize if this video was a bit haphazard I'm not feeling massively well um, so I'm struggling through but if you like the video and you found it useful please like and subscribe to my channel um, if you are uh, you know want to follow us on facebook and twitter that's great um videos coming out all the time i'm trying to keep a good good sort of you know process going here so yeah i just want to thank you for watching and uh, i'll see you next time